What do you think? Can young people, can they serve the Lord? Can young people, can they become leaders in the church? That has actually been an issue that has presented itself a problem for, for the church. If you take a look at the local church today, many, many local churches are starting to fade away because many of them are made up by, by those who are of the older generation. Young people, they aren't present in the church. I have my my thoughts, my opinions on, on why that is. An issue that has presented itself for a very long time is that young people in the church have been held back from serving the Lord and, and becoming leaders in the church. And so something that we're gonna be taking a look at for the next few weeks is the fact that once again, God, he can and he will use anybody. We have seen all quarter long that God, he will use man and woman, but will he use boy and girl? Will he use young people? That is the thought behind our, our lesson for today and for the next few weeks. Our lesson today taking place there in the 16th chapter of 1 Samuel. It opens up there in the first verse with, with the Lord asking Samuel a question. The Lord asked Samuel there, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? This is in reference to King Saul, who was the first king of Israel. We're told in the eighth chapter of 1 Samuel that Saul, he was made king of Israel because the people, they desired to be like the other nations of people. They got tired of, of what God was doing. They got tired of God raising up judges. And here Samuel was, he was serving as a judge, a priest and a prophet, but he was an older man who desired to turn things over to his two wicked sons. And the people said, no, we don't want your two wicked sons ruling over us. We wanna be like other nations. We wanna have a king rule over us. And so Saul, he was made king over the people, but Saul, he was eventually rejected. He was rejected by God. Why was he rejected by God? Well, Saul, he became a man who was disobedient. He, was, he became a man who was wicked in his way because he would disregard God. He, he lacked faith. Saul, he lacked patience in the Lord. He could not wait on God. He would go out and he would do his own thing, rejecting commands from the Lord. And so he was rejected by God and the kingdom, it was torn away from him. And so Samuel, our lesson opens up there, was sitting there and he was mourning. Why was it that he was mourning? Well, again, if we take a look at prior chapters there in the eighth chapter still of 1 Samuel, if we take a look at the sixth verse, we'll see there in that scripture that, that Samuel, he never desired for, for a king to rule over Israel. He never desired to, to be like other people. Samuel, he knew the potential of what could happen if man would rule over Israel. And so with, with Saul becoming a, a man who was wicked in his way, I feel like it hurt Samuel because Samuel, he foresaw what would happen. But again, the Lord, he permitted he permitted for, for Saul to, to rule over the people because again, that is what the people wanted. And so here we are today, taking a look at Samuel, again there in the first verse, sitting, essentially sulking over what happened. But God, we'll see there, he told Samuel to get up. God tells Samuel to get up. He tells Samuel to grab his horn and his anointing oil because there was work to do. The Lord said to Samuel there that I have provided for myself a king among the sons of Jesse, the Bethlehemite. Now here's where we can throw in a very fun fact about this Jesse, the Bethlehemite. I don't know if you remember this, but a few weeks ago, we had some Sunday school lessons where we were taking a look at two individuals. This Jesse is the grandson of, you should remember this, Ruth and Boaz. This is the same Jesse. So the, the thought of God sending Samuel to, to Jesse here, I, I want you to understand that this wasn't coincidence, okay? There was a divine plan that was at work here to where there's a future king, not talking about the king that is going to be anointed here, that we'll see anointed here in our Sunday school lesson today, 
but there was a future king who would be coming through the bloodline of Jesse, the bloodline which traces all the way back to Judah. There was a divine plan that was at work. So let's not think that this was a coincidence. As my dad would say, there's no such thing as luck or coincidence when it comes to the Lord. There's simply his will. And so we see God's will being at work here in our Sunday school lesson today. So when we take a look there at the second verse there in the 16th chapter of 1 Samuel, we'll see that Samuel, he asked the Lord, how could he go under the potential threat of Saul trying to kill him? How could he make the trip to, to Bethlehem? How could he get away? And the fact that Samuel would have to sneak away, because that's essentially what, what, is being, what is happening there. That's what God is instructing them to do, a way that he could sneak away. The fact that that is even being stated, even being brought up in the mind of Samuel, it tells us a great deal about the kind of wickedness, how wicked, how wicked Saul was, that Samuel has to sneak away because he felt that, that Saul might try to kill him if he was sneaking away to go in and anoint some other king. That again, it tells you the mindset of Saul there. So we'll see in those instructions, those instructions they would end with, with Samuel inviting Jesse to sacrifice with him where the one to be anointed would be revealed to Samuel. So Samuel, he did as instructed by the Lord there. We're told there in the fourth verse that he came to Bethlehem and we'll see that his arrival, it calls to stir the elders there. They questioned whether or not Samuel was, was coming peaceably. You see Samuel at that point in time, like I said, he was an older, he was a much older man there. And so for, for Samuel to be traveling in the first place, it would have been a shock. It would have been a, a surprise. And, and here the elders were seeing the older Samuel, this man who was again, a priest and a prophet here, was once a judge of Israel. Seeing him come, they were beginning to wonder to themselves, did we do something wrong? Is somebody causing any trouble? Why? They were looking at Samuel and saying, why are you here? And so Samuel had to, to shake that off. Uh, there was nobody who was in trouble. In fact, Samuel was in Bethlehem for a very good reason there. So there in the sixth verse, as we skip down a couple of verses there, we see that Jesse was presenting his sons to Samuel. He started off there with his oldest son there, Eliab. And when Samuel took a look at Eliab, the scripture tells us there that Samuel, he said, and I believe he said this to himself, he says, surely the Lord's anointed is before him, is before the Lord. Now, in this statement, we see Samuel making the same mistake that the children of Israel, that the people had made when they were taking a look at Saul. He was making that same mistake. The mistake that he was making here was that he was looking at the outward appearance. When, when Saul was presented to the people over in the ninth chapter of 1 Samuel and the second verse, we'll see that, that he was applauded. And the reason why he was applauded was because he had the looks of a king. He had the stature of a king in comparison to the rest of those who were in Israel. But is it the outward appearance that matters. What do you think? Is the outward appearance, does that matter? I think that this is something that, that still plagues many people today in that we don't look for what's inside someone. We, we don't judge someone for, for their actions or what might be inside of them. The first, the first thought that comes to mind when it comes to how we judge someone is is we take a look at their outward appearance and, and we judge people by their, their outward appearance. And, and we find that judging people by their outward appearance has, has led to the world in which we live in today. There's, that's why there are, are so many divisions in our society, in our community, because people always judge someone by, by their outward appearance, by the color of their skin. By, by their hair color, their eye color, what they look like. Then we will take a look at, at how they dress. We will make our judgment of, 
of who they are because of what they look like, how they dress, even how they talk. That is how we, we judge people. And so again, that is a major issue that, that we have to get over. And that's something that, that, that Samuel, he definitely needed to get over because again, he's making the same mistake that the people did with, with Saul. They, they were in a terrible shape because Saul had the look of a king. He had the stature of the king, but his heart, his heart was certainly in the wrong place. And so we'll see there that the Lord said to Samuel there in the seventh verse, he said not to make the same mistake that the people did. God said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at the height of his stature because I have refused him. God, we should understand there, as he said there, the Lord looks at the heart. You see, what you see, it can deceive you. That's something that I was raised up on. That's something that I was brought up on. Looks can deceive. What you read, it can deceive you as well. What you hear someone say, it can deceive you as well. This is an important lesson for us to learn, okay? We, we, you can't judge somebody by the outward appearance. You have to try to judge, you have to try to discern who someone is by, by what it is that is in their heart. And again, that's something that the Lord was saying to Samuel there. So after passing on from Eliab, the oldest son there, we'll see there in the eighth verse that Jesse, he began to, to move down the line of his sons with the next one being Abinadab, who was the next, who was the second oldest of his sons. And we'll see there that that son was also rejected. When we take a look at the ninth verse there, we'll see that Jesse, that Jesse moved on to Shema, who was the next son down the line. He was presented to Samuel. And like the first two sons, this son was also rejected. Jesse, he had gone to present more of his sons to Samuel, and they were also rejected as well, we're told there in the 10th verse. So in the 11th verse, we'll see that Samuel, he asked Jesse, he asked him, are all of these young men, are all of these your sons? See, Samuel was looking for another one because God hadn't said that either of these sons would be the anointed. The Lord had rejected all of these sons. And again, I wanna point out here that Jesse was making his way from the oldest and he was going all the way down the line there. And so when, when Samuel asked Jesse this question, you can imagine that Jesse, he, he likely frowned there, but we'll see that, that Jesse said, there remains yet the youngest and he's keeping the sheep. And I think it's very interesting here that Jesse, I don't think he knew exactly the, the job or the service that, that Samuel was looking for out of these, these sons that Jesse was presenting. But it's very interesting. And it honestly makes sense that, that Jesse would think that, well, you know, the prophet is here. This must be an important task. And, and so it kind of makes sense that he was working his way from, from his oldest and just going all the way down the line. Because the oldest, they are often seen more fit, more mature for, for jobs of importance. Okay. And, and you know, that's something that we still see uh, happening in, in, in our society today. You know, if it's an, an important job and, and again, we're thinking of these young men. Okay. Uh, we would think that, you know, go with the one who should be uh, more mature. And oftentimes the one who is most mature is the one, especially when it comes to, to young men, right? It's the one who is oldest. So it would make sense that that Jesse was making his way down the line from, from oldest to youngest there. And so we'll see that God's thoughts, again, they are not like our thoughts. His ways, they are not like our ways. They are, they are higher. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways, they are higher than, than our ways. And so we'll see there in the 11th verse that, that Samuel said to Jesse, go ahead, get the youngest son. And he said that we'll sit and, and we'll wait for, for him to, to get here. And so when the youngest son, who is David, when he is brought forth there, we'll see that David, we're told, was bright eyed. He was good looking. And we're told that he was ready, meaning that he had health, a healthy red colored skin. So this is all to say that, that David, he was very youthful. It is believed that that David was between the ages of 15 to 19. I, I usually think of David being about 
15 to 16 years old uh, at this point in time. So we'll see that when he was presented there in the 12th verse, the Lord said to Samuel, arise, anoint him for this is the one. So God had presented himself a king, right? And the king that he had presented for himself was the youngest son of Jesse, who again, would have likely been about 15 or 16 years old. Keep in mind here that again, I don't believe Jesse, I don't believe Jesse knew what this task was that, that, that Samuel was looking for his sons to do. But he, again, they have thought, they have believed that it was an important task. And so he started off oldest to youngest, right? He started off with the oldest, but all of the older ones, they were rejected by God for the youngest son. And so again, will God use young people to, and again, David was anointed to be king, to, to lead all of Israel. Will God use those who are young to, to serve, to become leaders? What do you think? You better believe that he will. So Samuel, we're told there in the 13th verse, he took his horn of anointing oil and he anointed David that day to be the king of Israel. The scripture, it tells us there that the spirit, that is the Holy Spirit. There are many people who don't think that the Holy Spirit is present in the, in the Old Testament scripture, but here he is. The spirit came and rested upon David from that day forward. David, again, he would eventually go on and he would become the king of Israel after the death of Saul. So as I said at the start of, of this lesson, and, and we've seen this all quarter long, God, he can and he will use anybody. The Lord doesn't care about sex. The Lord doesn't care about even age. Man, woman, boy or girl, the Lord, he will use. And, and, and I can say that from, from my own personal experience. I served as a Sunday school superintendent when I was in the 10th grade, when I was 16 years old. I was set over, over Sunday school and I enjoy serving in that role. And, and I would tell you all, and I'm proud to say this, when I served as Sunday school superintendent at church, we, we had the most attendance at that point in time. I don't know what it's like there because I'm no longer at that church, but, but we seen a boost in attendance and I'm very proud of that. And again, I served at a very young age. I became a preacher when I was 27 years old. And that's something that is very rare. You don't, you don't see much of that today. And, and the reason why I don't believe you see much of that today is not because young people don't believe in the Lord. Young people, they are always in search of something. And many young people, I have a niece who often, every now and then will hit me up asking me questions about scripture, about some something that is in the Bible, someone who is in the Bible. Young people have a thirst for knowledge and for wisdom. Young people have a thirst for and a hunger for, for knowing the Lord. But we get to a point in the, the church, and, and again, not saying that this happens in every church, but it, it often happens where a lot of younger people feel like the church pushes them away for, for whatever reason. They, they feel that the church pushes them away. It could be, again, because of their age, because of how some people in the church perceive younger people. And, and I think that we have, to, we have to get away from that. And we have to, to learn how, and my dad was big on this, we have to learn how to support the younger generations. The, the local church has to learn how to support the younger generations. We, we have in the local church today, many positions that are being held by people who, I'm gonna keep it real, it's time for you to sit down. There's a certain age where I think that it's time for you to, to retire and to turn things over to those who are younger, whose scripture says, hey, the young, they're able to run. And so, again, they, there is, and I believe the day is now, to where those who are older in the church must take up a position of an elder who is full of wisdom and can guide those who are younger, who can go out into the community and, and 
and minister the word and who can, can do work in the church. I again believe that the time is now because here I am, I am sitting on the door of, of 40 now. And it's not many of those in the church today who are my age. And, and the reason again why that is, is because they have felt for the longest of times that the church doesn't want them. But that again, should not be the case. And again, the reason why that should not be the case is because God, he wants all people, regardless of again, whether they are man, a woman, boy, or a girl, the Lord wants all people. And so we who are of the church, we should be reaching out to all people. And when there is a young person who comes up and they say that they have been called to serve in this role or that role within, within the faith. We who are of faith, we should support them. Because again, you don't know what anyone has been called to do by the Lord. Who are you to judge whether or not someone has been called for a role from the Lord? Yes, you may be able to discern over time, but if someone approaches you and they say they have been called by God for this or for that, find a way to support them. That is something that I hope that we take away from our Sunday school lesson this week and for the next couple of weeks. Young people, especially those who are of faith, they need to be supported. They need to be supported by us who are in the church, for all of us who are wise in our way, for all of us who again know the Lord. We must help those who are younger. We must help them come to know the Lord. We must help them in their service again we must be of support to them. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson and I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. Be sure that you like this video and if you aren't doing so already, make sure that you're following this channel. Hit the alert bell as well so that you don't miss any notifications for the next video that we share here on the Newfound Faith YouTube channel.